Watch you guys, today we're taking a look at Windows 11 Super Lite. It's called Tiny 11, and if you've got a system like this which has 4 gigabytes of RAM which is soldered to the motherboard and you're limited with RAM, then you can use something like Tiny 11. Maybe you've got an older system that is not officially supported with Windows 11, then you can use something like Tiny 11 to uh, install that on your system. And also it will bypass any sort of TPM uh, requirements and system requirements that Microsoft have set in place. Now Tiny 11 has been created by NT Dev. You can head over to archive.org and you can download one of the options he has available, either no system requirements or the B1 version, which is three gigabytes. There's also a torrent version on there as well if you want to download it. Next up, you're going to need Rufus, and you can either download the portable version or the installation version to create your bootable USB flash drive with Tiny11 on it. So let's go ahead and get this downloaded and open it up. All we need to do now is navigate to our ISO file we've just downloaded. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the select here, and we can now select our ISO image right there. And you can see we do have standard Windows installation. You can change this. And we also got GPT, which is for modern computers, or MBR, which is for older legacy hardware. Targeted system will be UEFI, non-CSM, and uh, we're going to change that. So if you're using MBR, it will be BIOS CSM. Okay, so let's get that set. So I've got the volume label left as is, change this to NTFS, and we can now click start, and this will start to uh, create our bootable USB flash drive. Now you'll see coming up here, there is remove requirements, so I can remove the four gigabyte plus RAM uh, secure boot and TPM option here. I can remove requirements for online Microsoft account as well, and I can also create a local account uh, with username, and you can put the username of your choice in there. I'm gonna leave it as main PC, and you can set your regional options uh, to the same values of this user if you wish. And you can also disable data collection, which is skipping the privacy questions if you want to do that. This will speed up the installation process. So I'm going to go ahead and select these and we can now click OK. And it would ask us, do we want to overwrite the data on that USB flash drive? I'm going to click OK here and this will start to uh, create our bootable USB flash drive with Tiny11 on it. So let's go ahead and let that uh, do its thing. So let me quickly show you the ISO files now that's completed. So the ISO file for an original Windows 11 is 5.18 gigabytes. And of course, Tiny11 is going to be a lot more smaller. And the reason for this is because it's had a lot of stuff taken out of it. And this is the problem where some people might require certain things inside Windows that has been ripped out to keep the size down and to make it uh, compatible with older slower systems you can see here 2.95 gigabytes is the size of tiny 11. now once you've installed this you're going to need to get yourself an activation key and this video has been sponsored by cd key cells if you're looking for cheap windows 10 or windows 11 pro oem keys or office keys you can check out cd key cells i'll leave some links in the video description basically click on one of those and create an account on cd key cells and you can uh, basically purchase anything with my promo code, capital B, capital Y09. So let's go ahead and I'll quickly show you how to do it. You can type in here Windows 10 or Windows 11. So I'm going to put Windows 11 and click on this one here, which is Windows 11 Pro OEM. Or you've got this one here, Windows 11 Home. I would advise you to go for the Pro version because it's a better version of Windows. Click on this and this will take you to the next page. All you need to do then is basically uh, click on the buy now button. Now you will need to have an account to purchase these, otherwise they won't know where to send your key to, and it will go straight into your account. So create yourself an account, and once that's done, you can use it in these regional countries as well, and uh, click on the buy now button, and this will take you to the next page where you can put in my promo code. Now the promotion code that I'm gonna be using here today is capital B, capital R09. You can also use this one here, which will put my promo code in. But you can just type it in here just like so and put 09 and push apply and it will give you a massive discount on here, as you can see. And this is on US dollars, of course. You can change it to Great British Pounds if you wish or any other currency, depending on where you live in the world. So let's do Windows 10 Pro here as well. I'll quickly show this one so you can see. 
And you can also do Windows 10 and Office together if you wish to save even more money. So all we need to do here is put in the uh, Windows 10 Pro OEM and click on the Buy Now. Put my promo code in again and apply this. And you can use this as many times as you like to purchase your orders and you will get discount every single time, as you can see here. Once that's done, they will send that to your account. You can click on Pay Now, click PayPal and click the Buy Now option and it will basically pay for that key and it will be sent to your account. So now we've got our key sorted, we're going to boot to our USB flash drive and start to install our version of Windows Tiny 11. So let's go ahead and boot up and we'll get this installation done and I'll show you basically how you can activate it and then basically use Windows 11 uh, Tiny version. And uh, we're going to go ahead and choose our language here. And as you can see, it looks slightly different to a normal installation. That's because it's been changed. So we're going to go uh, next here. You can accept the terms conditions here and uh, click next. Now I've got some partitions on here and this is where some people get confused. So just delete the partitions on the ones you don't want. Okay. Now, if you've got other hard drives in here, I'd advise you to disable those drives until you install it. Because if you delete the partition, you're going to be deleting your data. So be very careful if you don't understand what drive is what. So now I've got the partitions all deleted. I'm going to select disk one because that's where I want to install uh, my version of Windows 11. So let's go ahead and select disk one here. And if you left that selected on disk zero, it will install it on that drive. So be very, very careful. So you can click new here and create a new uh, partition if you wish, or you can click next and it will basically just go ahead and install it on there. So I'm going to click OK here. And, uh, and it will just go ahead and set this up for me. And there we go. And all we need to do now is we're going to go next. And this will copy all of the files over to our drive and get it ready for installation. So we're letting this go ahead and do what it does here. It does take a bit of time, so I'll skip along some of this and hopefully we'll get to the end and you'll see basically what it's all about. You'll get a couple of restarts during the installation process. This is pretty normal. Uh, for installing Windows. So I shall restart now and we will get to the next phase. So you should see something like this when it's booting up and you'll get to this stage where you will need to put in your details. So once you get to this stage here, you can choose your language for your keyboard layout and uh, you can skip this one because we don't need additional keyboard layouts and it will check for updates. Now the biggest problem you've got with any sort of Windows Lite version is Windows updates. It's not the security updates that cause the problems, it's feature updates. If you do a feature update, it's going to install Windows as a full version and not a light version anymore because it's not official uh, Windows light version. Now I need to install uh, my drivers for my graphics card. So let me go ahead and get this sorted out. And once this is done, you can use the Windows Store on this version. So that means you'll be able to download your uh, browser. I'm going to be downloading Firefox or you can use Google Chrome or whatever it is you want to use. So you can do this via the Microsoft Store, download and get that installed on the system as well. So there will be no Microsoft Edge and there's a bunch of other programs that have been removed from this particular build. So bear that in mind. Now let's take a quick look at the Windows 10 version that I had on here before. This is a version of Windows 10 which had nothing on it. It was basically a fresh install here. And you can see these are the stats that I got with that particular build for Windows 10. It's an i5-9400 uh, processor in here with 24 gigabytes of RAM. And I'll show you the stats for the RAM as well. And it's the same computer that I use. So this is before I installed Tiny11 on the system. And this was Windows 10 uh, 22H2. So this was the latest version of Windows 10. And there's the usage of the memory, 4.4 gigabytes of RAM usage here. And there's the stats. Now this can be uh, run on systems with only 384 megabytes of RAM, which is pretty low. And again, you can install this on eight gigabytes of storage if you wish as well, because it's been created that way. So there will be some limitations with this particular build because obviously a lot of features had to be cut out to make the cut and make the weight a lot smaller of the build itself. So bear that in mind. And uh, again, but this does solve a lot of problems where people 
have system requirements, it will bypass all those and you'll be able to use it on those types of systems. So let's take a look at Tiny11 now. And you can see this is the actual Tiny11 build that I've got running on the same system. And that was before up on the top left hand side. I've took a screenshot there for you. So the processes have come down a little bit. And uh, again, uh, we've got the same system specs here. And this is a fresh install. There could be some updates running in the background. I don't know uh, where that utilization just spikes every now and again. But looking at the memory, you can see in use, it's got 2.8 gigabytes. So it's halved, near enough halved, uh, the memory usage on this build, which is pretty good. Everything has been lowered quite a lot. The page pool and everything else has been dropped. And uh, I've done a pretty lightweight one myself a while back. Go, if you haven't seen that video yet, go and check that video out. I did make a super lightweight version myself, and I could have probably taken out even more stuff of that as well. Now, depending on how this video does, if you want to see a full uh, video on how to do this yourself, step by step, it will take a long time, and I will go through it, but it will be a long video because it does take a fair bit of time. And uh, I'll be happy to make that video for you, but depending on how this video does itself, if it gets a quite a few views, I will consider making that video. Now, once you've done this, you can head over to the activation center with your key code that you purchased from CD Key Sales and activate your version of Windows, and you should be good to go. Now, also, I just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who have joined my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support. I shall catch you in the very next video. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Have a lovely weekend, guys, and I'll see you on the Discord server for a chat, or I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.